Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination providing that they pay with the in-stream currency Struts which they earn by watching. In this video we begin with the return mission of Pekka and company from Mars. They had originally passed by Earth once but weren't able to capture around Earth but this time we have them on a better trajectory uh, it will take less Delta V to capture with the ion engines. The problem was that we had ion engines to do the capture, and that takes a long time. In fact, entering Earth sphere of influence, we started right away trying to capture to ensure that we actually did this time. And so uh, they have indeed captured in this case, and we can proceed with other missions with a clear conscience. So up next we have Envy Silence here with the Jupiter Wet Workshop. Wet Workshop referring to the fact that the habitable area was once a fuel tank, the oxygen tank, and has been converted. And it is here adjusting its orbit so that it can approach Jupiter properly. And we want to make sure we're in line with the moons of Jupiter so that eventually Envy Silence can get over to Europa is the goal. Europa orbit, not Europa landing. That adjustment maneuver being done, I needed to bring in a starship that was in orbit around Mars and full of supplies into the Phobos station where everybody is now, as far as those who are around Mars. And so I decided to deploy from the Phobos station uh, this Attila thruster tug, very efficient. It's basically got ion engine efficiency, but a fair amount of thrust. It's an augmented arc jet. Real arc jets exist, but there aren't these augmented arc jets. Uh, but, you know, hopefully we'll get them at some point, because they sure seem handy. So this is a former supply vessel, and we do get to Starship with it. You can see the space it has for food, water, and oxygen. We could just take the supplies off of Starship, but there is also one crew member on board Starship, Bill Kerman, as a matter of fact. And so we do want to get Bill over to the Phobos station and not leave him bereft of supplies. And the tug slash former supply vessel does not have space for a Kerbal. But when we tried to do the maneuver here, it didn't quite work out. You can see we do have a rotation, which means the center of mass is not quite at that docking port that we've docked to. You can see the red dot marking the center of mass there. And I tried to shift some supplies around to see if that would help. But ultimately, uh, I thought about moving the docking port. But I think Bill did not have the drill or whatever implement we would need to move the docking port. So that didn't quite work out. So we had to resort to plan B, and plan B was removing things from the starship. So as Bill, this is a pass-through starship, so everybody just gets to float around inside. And there is a little Mark I lander can inside to help store Kerbals safely. But anyway, I dis uh, disassembled the fins in the back to try and rebalance it, but that wasn't enough. The fins weren't that heavy. And so Bill disassembled the sea level engines, as you can see, which we didn't need anymore. And because this can't make a landing anyway, it's not configured for that. Uh, still not quite good enough though, and so, well, this starship has got to become a permanent fixture or something. We are going to get rid of the vacuum engines as well. It doesn't have, I mean, I don't want to refuel it around Mars anyway. It's big. I mean, you can see how big it is compared to the little tug that's trying to, got to try and push it. We really don't want to have to refuel all that. So, even on the surface, even if we could refuel on the surface, it'd be quite a lot to refuel. Uh, that seemed good enough, and so we managed to make the maneuvers. And this whole process gave us quite a few good shots here. Uh, the augmented arc jet. I don't know if an augmented arc jet is supposed to have that plume, but it has that plume. It is from KSB Interstellar, and we've got a reactor there, a pebble bed nuclear reactor with a thermoelectric generator and radiators. This is very futuristic and everything. Uh, but anyway, we are bringing in to Phobos here after getting some nice shots around Mars. And finally, after a few more maneuvers, we do make our rendezvous with the Phobos station. So here we go. Uh, this starship, incidentally, was originally Pekka's trip to Mars. Uh, he named it My Lab. And in the end, the uh, Phobos station, because this gets attached to it, ends up being called My Lab for a while, too, even though it was supposed to be originally called Phobian Portal. 
Okay, we need to rearrange things because otherwise Starship obviously wouldn't fit. There aren't a whole lot of convenient docking ports here. I mean, it could potentially, but it'd look awkward. I just wanted it at the end. So I moved this Attila tug that was still attached to the station. I call it a tug, it's a supply vessel. Uh, over there. And then we have to move uh, this assembly off. This had a docking hub, but it, the docking hub was such that nothing could actually dock to it because the clearance was so tight. So... Uh, except for the Attila supply vessels. And then I moved some... I don't know why I moved these resources over. Maybe just to make sure that the Starship had enough fuel. And we moved that off. And Starship would have to dock on its own. So here we go with Starship moving in. Obviously the pair of them couldn't dock because they only have one docking port apiece. So very gingerly with this big thing with somewhat awkwardly placed RCS. It's sort of like the space shuttle. We have to move it into the station, get its orientation right. I didn't want to have it rotated based on the angles of the station. And here we go. You can see how big it is. The funny thing is, there apparently isn't really stable orbits around Phobos, at least in Principia, at least according to P.E.K.K.A. So, yeah, it is... This whole assembly would probably be best landed on Phobos in real life rather than trying to keep it in orbit around Phobos, which is very difficult. But, without Principia, it is not so bad. So, there we go. I mean, you can see how lumpy Phobos is. You know that its gravity must be all over the place and perturb the orbit and make it impossible to stay in orbit around it. Anyway, so continuing to get things together again. This supply vessel docks in. And finally that end piece. With, uh, it does have additional habitat space there. And we're storing some Animation Mon 3 on it. As well as hydrogen and oxygen. It's got some stuff. It could be a tug. But we didn't use it. Anyway, it is docked in too. So... That's all together again, and we got those supplies. We have tons of supplies at this Phobos station, now called MyLab, with 11 crew. So, yep, well, it's haphazard. It was just put together as necessary, and that's how it looks like. After that, we needed to resupply Lunar Gateway, which is also a haphazard assemblage of things. And I decided to use an extended HTV. And that's why I normally use because of the shiny texture. But because I had relocated to Tanegashima in order to intercept the Jupiter Wet Workshop while we were trying to configure it in the previous episodes, I decided to go with a Japanese layout. Except I had the S4B tank and then I went with a LE7A engine. And then we are using this SLS tank down here. And we have eight LE7A engines from the Japanese H2 uh, system and then I decided to try the boosters off of the H2 and eight of them there so eight boosters eight LE7 engines and then one LE7 engine on top of course this is not gonna work right <laughs> but anyway the goal was to have a completely Japanese launcher uh, aside from the tankage being a little bit uh, American if you will. so off we go will it work no uh, well, uh, spoilers. But anyway, an interesting thought. Perhaps you can guess what the problems with this are. As we see it take off of Tanagashima. I wish we had better scenery of this. Uh, it is a very nice launch site, uh, similar to the New Zealand launch site that Rocket Lab has. Very scenic. Okay, off go the boosters. And they sort of go off all sorts of places. Uh, the engines and the boosters are from the Japanese launcher pack. I forget who made it. It's a very old one that I, I wrote the configura RO configurations for. Um, not all the stuff in that pack has been configured for RO though. I was worried for a sec that that interstage bottom was connected there. But anyway, it is clear. And we make orbit. We do make orbit, but we don't have enough Delta V to transfer over to the moon. So I decided ultimately to make the payload a little bit lighter and launch again. So first problem was Delta V. That is not the only problem. Maybe you figured it out. Off we go again. 
It isn't a bad looking system to be honest, and not entirely dysfunctional. It's fairly light, too. Off go the boosters. And they take out one of the engine pairs in this case, so that's two of the LE7s lost. We have six left. Uh, that will hurt things a little bit, but not completely prevent us from getting into orbit. Though we again don't have... we have a little bit more Delta V than before, but not as much as I wanted. I still try to make the transfer to the moon, but there's the thing. The LE7A only has one ignition, so that was sort of a critical flaw in this. And so I replace it with the upper stage engines off of the H2 system. I tried the engines from the Japanese launcher pack first, but those have the bottom tank, the oxygen tank, off of the second stage of the H2. So I put in, I forget which mod it is that has an alternate version of the LE5. The LE5, again, is the upper stage engine, and in this case what we're going to do is we won't have a complete orbit, so it doesn't need two ignitions. We'll just uh, take the core all the way into orbit, and then have the upper stage do the transfer. Here we also have 12 boosters now. We are taking no chances, and to that end, I also put additional separatrons on those 12 boosters so that they can separate properly instead of the haphazard way we were doing. Really, with the 12 boosters, it's looking even better, you might say. And... Off they go. Well, yeah, this time they're nice and even. I think I probably just put regular decouplers instead of the decouplers that came with the launcher pack as well. Okay, and this is running out here. Oh, it looks like I did use the upper stage for an extra ignition, so it looks like this version of the LE5 has more than one ignition. I don't believe I configured it. This is from some other pack that was previously configured for realism overhaul. LE5. I might be mixing up LE5 and LE7 sometimes. The LE7 is the bottom engine on the H2. It's the big one. LE5 is the upper stage engine. It is about 100 kilonewtons. Both are hydrogen and oxygen. So this had enough to boost us over to the moon. It's sort of like a EUS stage off of SLS. Four of these engines are about equivalent. Perhaps not quite as efficient as the RL-10Cs. And... This is the end of the burn. So, all good finally. It took a few tries with that. And we finally got this module over to the moon. Considering the launcher mass was 1,600 tons off the pad, a 30 tons to the moon is not bad at all. So, and here we are doing a high over the moon maneuver to rendezvous with Lunar Gateway as normally expected. It's usually some high maneuver to fix things up. And here we are approaching the wicked assemblage that is our Lunar Gateway in this install. So as it comes into dock and finally resupplies the Kerbals on board, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.